Uh, hey, PMS students, in an effort to stay connected to you, Dr. Nathan Busnitz and I are trying to uh, Zoom bomb you on a weekly basis with some of our distinguished faculty. Today, the distinguishment comes to a whole nother level, and that's distinguishment spelled with an M-I-N-T on the end in the proper British spelling, and that's spelling spelled S-P-E-A-L-L-I-N-G. We have with us your favorite faculty member. Uh, his name is Paul Twiss. Paul, welcome. It's good to have you. It's on good the Zoom. to be here. Good to You've see taken you. Taken away from your busy schedule. It's good to see children, you. And honored that you would spend this time with us. Nathan has prepared a series of increasingly difficult questions for you to answer, Let's and I'm it. just here to provide color commentary. Okay. Austin, I just appreciate the fact that because you're walking around outside, your connection is a little bit choppy. <laughs> yes. So the uh, the audio just came stand through. Stand still. Audio, so it's going to be fun to watch. Just stand still. Oh, is it not a good connection? Usually, I have a powerful connection. You can see my dog. Look, my dog is walking. <clears throat> I think he's got COVID nineteen. He sneezed twice this morning. <laughs> So, Paul, tell us, how is the Twist family doing in the midst of social isolation and uh, self-quarantine? <laughs> we are doing great. There's a sense in which not a whole lot has changed for us. Uh, Laura's still homeschooling the kids, and I'm, I'm uh, out in the garage most of the day trying to work. And then I guess the biggest change for us has been our evenings. The calendar is just empty and so we're at home all together every evening um, and we've been really grateful for that extra family time but uh, everyone's healthy and um, we're doing fine i i do appreciate the power tools that i see behind oh yeah you. Is, <laughs> so uh, what kind of seminary work are you uh, doing the, these are my fake tools kind of like fake news anyone that knows me knows that i don't have a diy bent uh, these are just for show i do have uh, coffee set up behind me and then all my books are there. Are you <clears throat> building your PhD out of wood? So let me show you this. Double? So Rory and I did just drill some holes in wood the other day. And Here we go. We Look what we made. This is a book stand. It's, I mean, we've still got some work to do. We're going to sand it down. We're going to stain it. But we, we put this together. Uh, you know, one of those things that you, you prop up a book on and, and hold it open. So that was That's just handsome. Yeah, and you know, it's so funny. In America, we use our hands to do that. So it's, it's pretty, pretty neat to see the this old was, world way. This was the Christmas, the TMS Christmas gift a year ago. So, <laughs> just if you need any more, come and find me. I'll do it. Paul, I did want to ask you. I, I saw recently in the news that Prince Harry and his wife Meghan are now living in Los Angeles. And I just wanted to know how you felt about the fact that there's now a member of the royal family oh. uh, living so close. Wow. You know, Paul, before you answer that, just know yeah. that this is just the tip of the iceberg in Nathan's hard-hitting <laughs> expose journalism. <laughs> this is not sensationalist at all. This is, this is important <laughs> stuff that we're going into here. Yeah. So I have a, a friend, this is not an answer to the question at all. I have a friend, close friend. Uh, it was the, the guy that introduced me to the gospel at, at university. He grew up uh, a, a friend of Prince William's. So they went to prep school together. They went to Eton together. And then they got put in different houses at Eton and they kind of parted ways. And he has some really fun stories of when they, him and Prince William were best buds around like five, six, seven. One of them was that they, they got into a, uh, like a scrap at sports day one day and they were wrestling on the grass and the paparazzi were there clicking all these pictures. And David, my friend, insists that he beat Prince William that day. And then they got all the photos in Hello Magazine and all the photos were with Prince William on top. And he said to his mom, mom, why didn't they show that I beat him? And she said to this five-year-old, the world cares more about Prince William than it does about you. Uh, now, the other good story, <laughs> they broke up for school for the summer and David got invited to a birthday party and uh, they accepted the invite. The following week, Princess Diana calls the home, David's home, and says Prince William would like David to come to the castle for his birthday. And it was the same day as the first invite. And his parents, David's parents, are both believers, and his mum said, thank you so much, but we have plans that day. And David was just distraught, like he didn't get to go to the castle. 
And she said, the Bible says our yes has to be yes. And we've already accepted this other invite. Isn't that cool? That's just like the best story. That's impressive. That's why I yeah. teach my kids situational ethics, though. We would have gone to the castle. <laughs> so, Paul, besides building book stands, what have you been yeah. up to? Uh, mostly trying to get my fourth chapter of my PhD done. My goal is by the end of this calendar month to submit the first draft of chapter four. For those of us who haven't heard about your topic or... Uh, have heard about it and forgotten for various reasons. <laughs> tell us, tell us again about your uh, subject. <laughs> so when I'm asked that question, I never know what level to go to. Some people say, what's your PhD about? And I say, oh, it's in the Old Testament. And that's enough. And then some people say, yeah, but where? And then you say, well, it's in the Joseph narrative. And for some, that's enough. And then when people keep probing, you say, okay, I'll tell you what it's about. Uh, let's, looking, let's go to the third level for okay, our TMS family. Okay. Let's go all the way to the third level. Well, there's more levels. The third we don't, level, get into, don't get into the footnotes, though, please. Yeah. <laughs> the third level would be to say that I'm looking at the, the plot structure of the Joseph narrative, trying to argue for a continuous plot line from beginning to end, which is not uh, widely agreed upon. And the reason that that's even a, a question to answer is because source-critical approaches to the to the Pentateuch today, argue for a multitude of sources based upon the idea of a collapsing plot structure. So they would say the Pentateuch can't be read, uh, and the, the way you can see that it's unreadable is because the plot stru structure keeps collapsing. Uh, there's not a continuous narrative. And so I just take one portion, the Joseph narrative, and say, let's just see if there is a way in which we can affirm a continuous plot structure from beginning to end, and if there is, then those conclusions have to be uh, reconsidered. I just think it's going to be encouraging for our students, for them to recognize that while they're doing homework, you are also doing homework. Oh, very much so. Yep. <laughs> True. And I think we're trying to help you on this project because the plot structure of these interviews collapses with great regularity. Regularly. So, yeah, I mean, this happened three or four times already in this this Zoom call. So I would we're, think we're, so. we're all about collapsing plot structures. Yeah. <laughs> well, so hey, that's Paul, it. That's it in a nutshell. We're just about a month now into this uh, unique time of safer at home, social isolation. Uh, we kind of passed the initial shock of it all, and we've settled into a little bit of a new normal. I'm sure for many of our students, they're starting to grow weary of kind of the continuing nature of all of this. Do you have any thoughts or wisdom, perspective from your vantage point in terms of just words of encouragement for our students? Um, well, I would say, you know, I, I really do think this is a unique opportunity. Um, that, you know, it's a window of time that, that we trust is going to end. And I think we'll look back on it and uh, just note how unique our situation was during this time. And I just would not want for it to pass and there to be a, a sense of we really missed the, the unique opportunities that it, that it is. And, and really, I just mean, you know, there, there are windows of time now that perhaps we don't normally have. For us as a family, we just have found that we've got so much more time together to do things. And in the busyness of, of normality, um, you know, it's hard to get those windows. And now they're just every single evening we're together and nobody's going out and and so we want to try and make the most of that that's going to look different i think for every everyone uh, their family situation and their living situation but without a doubt we do have a an opportunity here and um i would just encourage students to to recognize it's not going to go on forever and you want to make the the, the best use of this time <clears throat> yeah that's helpful and I think it is a way of rethinking the situation where it's not about trying to survive, but rather right. trying to really make the most of the opportunity because you're right, there are unprecedented opportunities during this season. So yeah, I think so. That's really helpful because I think it is an opportunity not only to, to waste time, which I think is what a lot of people are just trying to do, bide the time and, and burn the clock. But I think that some will be able to look back and see that they were accomplishing things during this time. So that's a good Thanks. encouragement. Thank you, Paul. Thanks, sir. All right, Paul. Well, hey, we're grateful for you. And we are so glad you're part of our faculty all the way from the UK.
you and Prince Harry, the two transplants out here in Los Angeles. I missed that news. So he's, are they, they've settled out. I thought they were living in Canada. The last Canada rejected them, it. spewed them out. <laughs> it rejected me too. Spit them right out. Yeah. <laughs> so that's both, how it goes. Okay. Well, that's good news that they're living here. I guess. <laughs> I figured you well, would did know, you, since I assume you're also part of the royal family in some no, way. I have no connection. <laughs> now, Nathan's just very interested in royal gossip. <laughs> I would say it's generally true that the Americans are more interested in the royal family than the Brits are. <laughs> That's really funny. I, I got this lesson from Paul in a snowstorm. We were trapped in a snowstorm between Atlanta and Charlotte some years ago. True. Yeah. Uh, stuck in a rental car for how many hours did that <laughs> two hour drive take us? We never got above 40 miles an hour. Uh, that must have taken us about six hours. I've heard all Paul's <laughs> stories, all of them that he has, he told yeah. to me. Well, on <laughs> that note, I think we'll sign off. <laughs> good to see you guys. All right. Good to see you, Paul. Bye.